Mr. Mace has been left 30,000 which he plans to invest on stock exchange in order to have a source of capital be decide to start his own business in few years time. A friend of his who works in city of London has told him that the London stock exchange shows strong form of market efficiency. So when it's come to the market efficiency, you might have learned there are three types of market efficiencies. So first one is weak form efficiency. So what is this weak form efficiency is what you have to understand. If you can't, if you can't get benefited, if you can't get benefited by having the past information like the movement in share prices that market we will call it as weak form efficient yes there is some kind of efficiency level but the efficiency level is weak if you have past transactions past details past share price movements if you can't get benefited from those information that efficiency level we will call it as weak form efficiency next one is semi strong form efficiency semi so under the semi strong form efficiency what you have to understand is if you can't get benefited by having past information as well as all the publicly available information you have all the past information past share price movements and you have all the publicly available information also something like your financial statements using this information if you can't get benefited that efficiency level we will call it as semi strong efficiency level and final one strong form efficiency level in strong form efficiency level you can't get benefited i am clearly stating you can't get benefited by having past information by having publicly available information as well as private information that level of efficiency we will call it as strong form efficiency let's take an example you have the past information of an organization past share price movements you have the information you have the all the financial statements of the organization which is publicly available for everyone and you have certain private information also inside the information of a business by using all this information still if you can't get benefited means that efficiency level we will call it as strong form efficiency level so if your share market is strong form efficient for you to get benefited what you have to do is you have to diversify your investments you have to invest in good places by doing a diversification so let's go to the answers if this is the case which of the following investment strategy should mr may follows so this london stock exchange is in a strong form efficiency so as i said you what you have to do you have to invest in good places diversify your investment then only you can get benefited a good spread should be there in your investment so that answer is there in which option study the company's report in the press and try to spot undervalue shares in which to invest it's wrong invest in two or three blue chip companies and hold the shares as long as possible wrong build up a good spread of shares in different industry sectors so if you uh, if your share market is strong form efficient for you to get benefited there should be a good spread in your investments so for this question your answer should be c a company has 7% loan notes in issue which are redeemable in 7 years time at a premium of uh, 5% for their nominal value which is 100 the before tax cost of debt of the company is 9% and after tax cost of debt of the company is 6% before moving into this question i want to teach you something there is a small element or small area where most of the students can't understand when to use before tax debt rate when to use after tax debt rate i'll give you a small trick 
if you are dealing with a calculation of finding out weighted average cost of capital which is connected with business financing if that is the case you have to use the after tax rate if you are dealing with something like valuation of a security which is connected with business valuation section you have to use the pre-tax rate so this is the trick that i want to tell so let's get into the question the person who has this loan note he is getting seven percent it's a seven percent loan note that means the person who has this loan note he will get seven dollars every year so from year one to seven every year how much he will get he will get seven dollars and after seven years at the time of redemption how much he will get hundred plus it is five percent premium so hundred plus another five percent in total how much he will get hundred and five hundred and five so here the debt rate you have to use as i said you business valuation pre-tax rate so the before tax cost of debt of the company nine percent so you have to use nine percent I'll use the annuity factor here. Nine percent seven years annuity factor is five point zero three three. Nine percent seven years discounting factor is zero point five four seven. So here, how much is the present value that you are getting? Seven into five point zero three three. You are getting thirty five point thirty five point two three one and one zero five into point five four seven. How much you are getting? For fifty-seven point fifty-seven point four three five. So what's the total value that you are getting? Thirty-five point two three one plus fifty-seven point four three five. You are getting an answer of ninety-two point six seven. So ninety-two point six seven is the in answer. In. So the market value of this loan note is ninety-two point six seven. TKQ company has just paid a dividend of twenty one cents per share, and its share price one year ago was three point one zero per share. The total shareholder return for the company was nineteen point seven percent. So, how to calculate the shareholder return? So, normally shareholders will get two types of returns. So, I'll take an example first of all to explain to you. Today, I am purchasing a share for a cost of hundred dollars. Okay. After a year, the share price is increasing for hundred and ten. So here, see, this. Let's assume I purchased in two thousand and four. Okay, this is beginning of two thousand and five. We'll assume like that. Oh, end of two thousand and four. So my share price increased by ten dollars. So there is a capital gain for me, which is ten dollars. Apart from that, for this particular year, the company gave me a dividend of five dollars. So what you have to understand. By investing this hundred dollars, by investing this hundred dollars, I got two types of returns. One is the capital gain, which is ten dollars, capital gain, which is ten dollars, and the dividend, which is five dollars, dividend. So my return is how much for the investment that I made? Hundred dollar investment, I got a return of fifteen. So as a percentage, my return is how much? Fifteen percent. So how did I calculate this return? How did I calculate this? My investment amount, which is my old share value, P zero, okay. And here one return is capital gain. How did I calculate that ten dollar from my new share value? I deducted my old share value. New share value is one one ten. My old share value is hundred. So from my new share value, I deducted my old share value. So this element, this part. Gave me the capital gain, plus the dividend that I received. This is the total shareholder return. Now, using this formula, let's try to get the answer for this particular question. So, I'll write the formula here: shareholder return equals for the investment that I am making. I will get two types of return. One is the capital gain plus the dividend. So the shareholder return is given in this question. How much is that? Nineteen point seven. So I will write it as zero point one nine seven equals. The company has just paid a dividend of twenty one cents per share, and its share price one year ago 
was 3.10 that means my old share price is given which is 3.10 i don't know p1 new share price i don't know so p0 is given which is 3.10 Dividend value also given. How much is that? Twenty one cents. That means it is zero point two one. So my P one value. That's what I have to find. So zero point one nine seven into three point one zero is equals P one minus three point one zero plus zero point two one. So your P one equals how much? 0.197 into 3.10 plus 3.10 minus 0.2. So how much is the new share price that you are getting? So I will put a bracket here to be in the safe zone. 0.197 into 3.10 plus 3.10 minus 0.21. So how much is the share price that I am getting? 3.5. 3.5 so this answer is there in which option it is there in answer a so my current share price is 3.50 compton plc has announced a 144 right issue at a subscription price of 2.5 the current cumulative right price of the share is 4.1 what they are asking is new x dividend market value of the share so you have to calculate the terp actually in this question so for four old shares, I'm getting one new share. So one old share value is how much? 4.10. One new share value is how much? 2.50. So for a person who has four old shares, we'll get a one new share, which is a right issue share for a reduced price. So here, how much you are getting? Four into 4.10. It's 16.4 here 2.5 so this person now how many shares he has five shares what's the value of the five shares it's 18.9 so five share value is 18.9 so what's the value of one share so 18.9 divided by 5 I am getting a value of 3.78 so this is my theoretical x right price so 3.78 is there in answer a an investor believes that they can make abnormal returns by studying the past share price movements in terms of capital market efficiencies to which of the following does the investors believe relates to so actually this investor is believing by going through past share price movements i can get abnormal gains so actually this investor what he is trying to do by using certain techniques by doing an analysis here he is going to get benefited so actually he is trying to get benefited by doing a technical analysis so that is the in answer c I have done a comprehensive revision for ACCA Financial Management FM or F9 syllabus for a very reasonable price. You can purchase this revision through the link available in the description. In this revision program, I have covered 120 plus MCQ type questions and 6 constructed questions. For each question, I have given you detailed answers and I have provided some additional learning as well. So I hope this revision program will be useful for you in order to pass your exam. If you like my video, Video, don't forget to like it share it and make sure to subscribe my channel